Welcome back. You're with us on the CNBC TV 18 Diwali Masterclass. It has been a fabulous session. We've had three amazing lectures from our three market masters here. And our audience has kept uh, all the market masters on their toes with lots of very, very interesting queries. We have time for a couple more. So I'll quickly, uh, you know, get to uh, uh, Navita. I think you have a question. Hi. Um, I uh, wanted to ask, thank you, first of all, thank you, CNBC and Glad Sobi for having here. us here. <laughs> and uh, my question is, the U.S. bond yield is expected to remain elevated for some time. Yeah. Uh, the FII outflow, we are going to see some money going out of, from the FII side. And there's some volatility that is expected to stay in the market. So which are the categories uh, which investors should be looking at from, uh, in mutual funds? Okay. Um, gentlemen, any one of you would like to take that? So one, U.S. interest rates are remaining higher for longer, but that's also because debt to GDP of U.S. has increased so much. To give you a very small example, U.S. is about seven times our GDP, but their credit card debt is 40 times our credit card debt. And the student loans are 90 times higher than our student loans. So some part of this higher yield is function of increased supply and deteriorating credit standards. From our point of view, our competition is not necessarily with US Treasury. It could be with the other emerging markets. Russia is a no-go. South Africa is very risky. China has designed on Taiwan. They could become no-go soon. Brazil is a communist government. So for us, there is enough space to be an investor's portfolio as long as we deliver 3G of growth, governance, and green. Okay, fabulous. So we don't have to worry too much and lose too much sleep over this 5% on the US 10 year. Got that. Great. Thank you. Uh, Aditya, I think Aditya has a question on, on mutual funds. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, thank you for having me. So my question is, we have seen a good number of new AMCs that, that have been come up into the market recently that have been launched. How do you see this as a potential to tap an untapped market of first-time investors? Oh, okay. That's a bit of a business question. Uh, who wants to take that? Should I take it? <laughs> please, please, Nilesh. So more the merrier. When Unit Trust of India started mutual fund, they expanded the market. When SBI and other PSU banks came into mutual fund, they expanded the market. We all started our career when foreign mutual funds came and joined hands with local partners, we expanded the market. So more the merrier. Jitne jyada aayenge, we'll expand the market further. And as I mentioned, we have reached only 4 crore investors. I have to probably reach 40 crore more investors. How do I provide financial security to every Indian? Ek akela ye nahi kar paayega. We need more people to do that task. Okay, so the more the merrier and you know, so much happening. We discussed passives earlier on the show as well. So uh, we have, I think, a question from Disha. Disha, are you there? Disha, yeah, let's take your question. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. So my question is, uh, with so many FIIs moving out and uh, then too the market is not much impacted because of the strong DII holdings. Mm. So will it kind of... Will the DIIs be able to hold the market very well or will there be any impact because of FIIs? Well, these are the men and their managers who have held the market up this year and they've done a fabulous job, haven't they? So, uh, what's the sense? Getting stronger and more powerful? Actually, I, I believe that this is not a factor we should bother. We should buy stocks cheaper. Mm -hmm. And whether, like, if you look at periods of time where FIIs sold very aggressively, like 2008, those were all, or even 11, mm. or 13, mm. those were all very good opportunities to buy. What matters is whether investors have bought uh, at the right time in a very big way. Mm. And uh, when markets are cheaper, if they buy aggressively, it's good. Mm. If they buy aggressively in periods like 2007, when valuations are high, it's a problem. This FII-DII debate is not a relevant it's debate. Not relevant relevant debate what matters is when markets are down like 2020 mm. whether investors domestic investors uh, put uh, more money to work mm. and when markets are very high whether, whether they put lesser money to work let me ask you where you gentlemen will put your own money to work one it's like a one line uh, question to all of you where are you investing this year Mihir? i would obviously go for equities uh, and what type of fund? Give us something more specific. Look, 
So as I said, <laughs> I am growth biased. Okay. So flexi cap is the best strategy for me. Okay. Uh, because then I can pick and choose, you know, uh, which, which segments. So you are going the flexi. See, India has ample stock, uh, ample scope for stock picking. Okay. So going for growth. Absolutely. Naren, where would you All put All types of hybrid funds. Hybrid funds this year, huh? And Nilesh, what about you? Um, सौ रुपया मिलता है थर्टी नाइन रुपीज सरकार लेके जाती है दस रुपया ई पी एफ ओ लेके जाता है दस रुपया एन पी एस लेके जाता है बीस रुपया आई हैव टू पुट इन टू स्क्रीन इन द गेम सर्कुलर फ्रॉम ओवर नाइट फंड ऑल द वे टू दी लार्ज यू नो दी सेक्टरल फंड बाकी जो पैसा रहा बीवी को दे देता हूँ सो आई हैव नो मनी I think he just gave us the recipe to you know how to how to be happy in life. It's all distributed <laughs> evenly. No need to stress about it. Fabulous, fabulous. Time for one last closing question, uh, Pranav. Let's take your query because this is the question on learning. How can we learn and how can we evolve our uh, investing style? Pranav, go uh, ahead. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, as a young investor uh, who is just getting started, uh, how credible it be will be for him to? Put his trust on these fin uh, financial influencers. So fin fin influencers as era is going on. So how credible it would it will be, and uh, if not, then uh, what uh, what uh, medium would you suggest for investment? Oh, fin influencers. That's a tricky word, huh? These days, you you should keep watching all the SEBI bulletins carefully to see <laughs> what the latest is on that one. Uh, but gentlemen, I mean, the, the question is valid. If not fin influencers, then what? I mean, how how can young investors, new investors? Uh, keep themselves updated what's the the best way to keep learning mehir see the point is first of all there's a term in legal parlance which is caveat emptor buyer beware mm. so whatever source of information or whatever source of influence <coughs> that you have while taking a decision ultimately the decision is yours and there is no substitute for you know common sense and hard work as far as making investment decisions is concerned there is no easy way out you know or leave it to the mutual funds No, absolutely. But even then, Arun, you want to sort of expand on this. Even when it comes to buying the right funds, when either because we are in a in a country where people are still not really willing to pay for advice. Let's face it. I mean, that's the reality for as as us as investors. It's just the harsh truth. So in such an environment, how should you ensure that whether you're buying funds or stocks or any other you know asset class, how how do you protect yourself? It's, I mean, I don't know whether fin influencers are the right uh, source of information. Uh, what uh, the way. we have learnt is by reading books mm. and uh, reading on like i've learned from gurus like howard marx who writes free on the web mm. so that's how i have a lot of people like uh, have on a continuous basis kept writing books also which are 300 400 rupee books also are there which have been very useful but and uh, use those books to use them to understand uh, indian markets I found that more useful in my mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. rather than these kind of because we don't know what is the what is behind many of these things sure. and uh, that's how we have avoided uh, many mistakes sure. and you have to continuously Absolutely. keep learning there is no choice and the markets are not what it was mm -hmm. today you have much more information in 90s when we first started investing we had uh, much lower sources of information mm. today you have an overdose of information but that overdose of information some of it could be a wrong information and you have to be very careful, careful uh, very very careful I mean, any any parting no, shots no uh, just on information yeah. i remember in when we started our careers a an analyst yeah. used to be a guy who could compile polypropylene prices or polyethylene prices on an excel sheet and take a print out and send it to us mm. that was an analyst that was the level of information available yeah and today you know anybody with a mobile phone has probably 100 times more information that what we had in the 90s it's the democratization of, of information that's Absolutely. happened but we need to be careful uh, any final thoughts nilesh trust but verify wonderful i think that really sums it up gentlemen it's been a pleasure having you in our studios and thank you so much for taking out the time answering all these questions and audience you have been fantastic as well so very interactive very engaging i thoroughly enjoyed it and i'm sure our viewers at home also had a great time watching it's a wrap on this edition of the cnbc tv 18 diwali masterclass once again we wish you all seasons greetings and a very very happy diwali